Hey there, small business owners. Welcome to the Tax Talk Podcast, the premier business podcast aimed at unlocking your unique potential. I'm your host, Jared Pond, and I help my clients do three things. Find common sense business solutions, minimize tax and maximize profits, and preserve your legacy. Each podcast episode will dig deep into an everyday problem that small business owners face, and most importantly, explore solutions to these problems. Are you ready to solve problems? Are you ready to keep more of your hard-earned wealth? And are you ready to preserve your legacy? Let's get to it. Welcome to Tax Talk Podcast, episode number four of Bobcats, Bosses, and Breakups. Before I provide a little bit of background on the series, I just want to introduce my guests today. Today, I've got Chelsea and Garrett Zimmerman, husband and wife team who have recently opened the Team Zimmerman Real Estate through Century 21 Maximum. They uh, work with both buyers and sellers in Red Deer and across Central Alberta. Team Zimmerman has launched with the intent of putting people first in the real estate process. And Chelsea and Garrett welcome all of their clients to experience the brighter side of real estate. So Chelsea and Garrett, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule yeah. to hop on the podcast. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Jared. Perfect. Yeah. So before we get into today's episode and the story kind of behind it, I'll give that quick background, I guess, as to why we're doing this series, what you're going to get out of it, and uh, what to kind of expect overall. So back in 2007, I was running a flatwork concrete company, started it up kind of out of the middle of nowhere, just dove head on uh, and made a lot of mistakes along the road. And kind of looking back, I realized that if I would have consulted some professionals along the way, probably a lot of mistakes that I could have avoided beforehand and a lot of hard lessons that I could have avoided and uh, life probably would have gone a little smoother <laughs> had I just taken the time to you know get some uh, some insight from some professionals so with this episode bit of a stretch in the fact that I did not go down the home buying process during the period of time that I had this business open but I guess with that in mind, you know, a few years after the business closed down, my wife and I kind of took that journey into buying that first house. Mm -hmm. We didn't end up using a real estate agent at that time. We just decided to kind of build from scratch, you know, had to consult with the contractor and the mortgage broker and you name it, we kind of went through it. and. It seemed to drag on and on and it was stressful and it just kind of, you know, made us realize how much was involved with the process and, you know, if you're not properly prepared for it, kind of the stress that it can put on a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to bring uh, Chelsea and Garrett in to kind of discuss, you know, some maybe tips that small business owners and just busy working families can kind of take into consideration mm -hmm. when they're going out there and either buying or selling that that house mm -hmm. and you know just trying to avoid some of the simple mistakes that you know might trip some people up along the way totally right on yeah. so the first topic i wanted to touch on was just how does a real estate agent help in the buying process mm -hmm. you know what is it that you guys do that helps take the pressure off of busy working families mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. So, I mean, essentially we're here to take care of all of the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. So when you're a busy professional, mm -hmm. that's why you hire the big guns, like we like to call it, <laughs> because you know, you're know you bringing in the professionals who are experts in their field. Mm -hmm. And so we are familiar with you know the process from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So basically when it comes to you know, any, you know, the process from financing mm -hmm. to closing, we have done this time and time again, so we know the things that are necessary in order to make that process seamless and smooth and to take the stress out of it for our clients. And so 
you know, basically from being able to make recommendations for people in financing trusted professionals that we work with, um, that you know we know are good at what they do, that can help with the financing. Um, all, and then we do what's called a buyer consultation. So I mean, for buyers that are buying, um, it's a little different on the selling side, which we can kind of talk about in a minute. But for buyers, you know, um, we do a full buyer consult. So basically, we just learn about you and what you're looking for, and what we, you know, the types of houses that you're looking for, um, what your budget is, and then we put you on what's called a matrix. So um, it's a personalized, customized home search where basically you are going to be able to get all the listings that are currently on the market sent to you in a customizable email template where then you can go in and favorite them, discard them, you know, it just, it's a way to organize the, the yays and the nays. Um, and then, yeah, then we go house shopping. And, you know, we, we work with you once you've got that, you know, that financing, kind of those numbers in place. We get you into those houses and, you know, we can help you to just, you know, go through the places kind of with a fine tooth comb, be able to, you know, make that, um, that process really, you know, we know things to look for. Um, it's awesome having Garrett on board now because he knows the systems of the houses. He knows, you know, what to look for for plumbing, what to look for in terms of like any red flags, you know, like obviously I do too. But as a male, you know, you male, men are typically a little closer <laughs> to it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's awesome because the two of us together, you know, we can really provide value in the house shopping process and then negotiations. So when it comes time to writing an offer, when it comes time to negotiating, we do all of that on your behalf. So we would then be able to, you know, work with the other agents and, you know, we've likely built relationships with those people so the transaction goes smoothly. And, you know, we believe in collaboration. So, I mean, we love to just work with other realtors to get the deal done um, in a way that is, you know, great for, for everyone in, involved and um, yeah and then we just kind of walk you through the next steps after you purchase the home and help you to make sure that you're not forgetting anything when it comes to you know utilities that need to be transferred over and you know we take care of all the conveyancing so all of the uh, uh, paperwork that goes into you know uh, to the lawyers we do all of that for you. So yeah, it just it just makes it simple. And then we celebrate with you when you get into your new place. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I think the, the other thing that's important to note is time. When you're yeah. working with a real estate agent, we save you time. So that you're not sitting at home on realtor.ca, spending hours trying to find the home or homes that you want to go out and look for. for sure. You know, the matrix that Chelsea talked about is a time saver. It's designed to help you filter out the homes that aren't even going to be on your radar okay. so that you're not out there spending your valuable time mm -hmm. as a business owner, as a working professional, as a parent who's got kids in extracurriculars. You know, the last thing you have is extra time. For sure. So this helps. And then we, having the background, and maybe potentially we've walked into some of the homes you think you want to see, right. we can tell you whether or not it's worth your time. Sure, sure or if we should just take it right off the list. Because at the end of the day, you know what we hear from everyone is, well, I just don't have enough time in the day. So working with an agent, working with us, we help save you time mm -hmm. and then get you into the place sooner than you otherwise might have. So mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a real key advantage, especially given, you know, people don't have a lot of extra time. So let's try and create some for you if we can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. And I know like just recently, you know, my wife, and I have kind of decided, you know, maybe it's time to move. We've been out, you know, out of town for about 10 years. And, mm -hmm. you know, our son's in town a lot with, like you say, the extracurriculars mm -hmm. and everything else. Yeah. And the driving back and forth mm -hmm. is getting a little tedious. <laughs> so I know I've kind of hopped on realtor.ca just mm -hmm. to kind of see, you know, we have an idea of what yeah. we want. Mm -hmm. But like you say, there is hundreds There's of lots. houses out there. Yeah. So from I guess maybe the first time that someone would reach out, speak to you, to the point of actually buying a house, what kind of timelines are we looking at? Like, if I'm maybe thinking, you know, we're gonna purchase a couple of years down the road, is it worth it to even touch base with you now? Or should I be kind of touching base when I'm firm into that market and I definitely wanna buy mm -hmm. now, I guess? Right. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's different for everybody. Um, you know, it all depends because a lot of times, like if you're a couple years out, you know, the your financing is likely not in right. place. You don't know the value of your current home if you're needing to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would recommend that, you know, basically from start to finish, if you are wanting to get your house, like if you have a house to sell, I mm -hmm. mean, if you're not renting or you don't own your home, it's a little different, but I mean, in your case, if you, you know, you own your home, so you're going to need to sell. Yeah. And so, you know, we'll, what we typically advise too is that, you know, it's actually wise to wait until you have your home firmly sold because then you know that, okay, so my, our house is sold, our conditions are removed, we're good to move forward with a real estate transaction without having to put anything in there that says that we are still conditional on selling our home. Okay. So, I mean, sell your house. When you're in that position, things can actually happen pretty quick. So, I mean, like at the end of the day, there are, you know, it varies from an immediate possession and it can go up to like, you know, 90 days, 120 days. Most often than not, it's 30 days negotiable to 45 days negotiable or your immediate possession. So that even in itself is going to take a minimum likely of like two to three weeks, even if it says immediate possession. Okay. So, I mean, by the time you shop for a property and then, you know, you put a, an offer in, right. You know, usually once you put that offer in, you've got about a minimum of 10 business days before the conditions get removed. Okay. And then you're, you know, usually that, you know, I would say, you know, 10 to 40 days or so, you know, okay. to, to close and to take possession of the property. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, I mean, it is different for everybody, but yeah. No, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I guess then, in the interim, I should be perusing Realtor.ca, kind of getting an idea of what we might like, yeah. and then say if we're ready to maybe get into the market, sell the house, yeah. then we could contact you, totally. work down that process, mm -hmm. and then at least, you know, if something does come up, I guess on the sales side, mm -hmm. in a short period of time, at least we have an idea as to maybe something that we would like to kind of move into down the road. Yeah. And we've kind of got a bit of understanding to give you some sort of place to start and help yep. us out, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, the first thing would be to sit down and even determine what type of home style do we right. prefer, mm -hmm. right? Bungalow, bi-level, two-story, uh, you know, what subdivisions right. are important to us? You know, what amenities do we want to be close by? And just by starting to do that, and, and that's what we can walk you through, I mean, we've combined lived in Red Deer for over 40 years. Right. So we really know the areas and know the amenities, but we also understand that, you know, some people love the two story sure. and some people would prefer a bungalow. Sure. And what we do with all of our clients is encourage them to actually walk through the different home styles okay. so you can get a feel for them. Um, Cause there's different characteristics to each style of home. Right. Um, so getting that figured out and then going into the process of, you know, listing, doing an evaluation, because the market changes so frequently, right. Right. Um, you know, prices as well as you know what's available depending on the time of year, okay. um, that all shifts, and and, and we want to walk people through that. Gotcha. So I think starting with yeah, what do we like? What's our style? Okay. And then where do we want to live? What subdivision? Gotcha. North, south, east, west, and then we go from there. And like Chelsea said, it, it does take a bit of a process. <laughs> But if we've got very motivated buyers and a very motivated seller on the other side, you can bring a deal together and make everybody happy. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right on. So is there anything else, I guess, in closing that topic um, that you want to just touch on on how you kind of help out the buying process? I think we pretty much covered it. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, we're here to help through those life transitions. And our, our main focus is to work for you so i mean at the end of the day that's what we're here for we're not here to like you know just make the sale it's about you know really just that whole process and what that looks like for you and your family and making sure that you make the best decisions for you for yourself so yeah Perfect. yeah a big thing that our model is is you know something we're gonna really build from is the education okay. component so we want to make ourselves available yeah. if there's questions you're sitting there at 10 o'clock on a Friday night one around. <laughs> what, what is this, you know, what is, what is a high efficiency furnace versus right. just a furnace? 
you know, what's what's the benefit to me? Right. Or, you know, what? why would I want to be on a pilot? Or what's the extra responsibility if I go and buy a condo? What's included in condo fees? Right. Or, so those are the types of things that we want to, you know, make ourselves available to because it's about so much more than just a house. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an educational opportunity, it's a life transition opportunity, mm -hmm. it's exciting, mm -hmm. it's scary, it's nervous, it's <laughs> all the all things, the things. Yeah. and we wanna ride the roller coaster mm -hmm. and help, help make it smooth. So questions, answers, that's what we're here for. Yeah. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you do have kind of a blog on the go that kind of highlights some of these things yes. and, and people could kind of check that out and, and pick up some, some tips there. It's, it is, yeah. It's it's a piece that we have created uh, because it is really about educating. Right. You know, I believe that when we are educated and we know more, we can make more informed decisions and better decisions. And so, yeah, the blog is a place for that. Uh, as well as open lines through social media, email, phone. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on being available yeah. and you know, not limiting ourselves, whereas you know, some other high volume realtors, they are at a capacity issue. Yeah. And to go back to my comment around time, they just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our competitive advantages right now is we have the time. We're in build mode, growth mode, and we will make ourselves available for our clients because it's about educating them and then they can make the best decision for them. Well, that's awesome, good to hear. So next topic was just touching on maybe some of the documents and the info that you guys might need to see out of a prospective client. Mm -hmm. You know, say I'm ready to go buy, what do I need to have in place? Should I have that pre-approval ready to go mm -hmm. before you guys kind of start chatting back mm -hmm. and forth with me? Is that kind of the starting place? Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, we would love to see a pre-approval. Um, that, I mean, again, if anybody needs a referral to amazing, you know, people in different financial institutions, um, we do have a, um, you know, it's called a trusted vendors list, but basically we have contacts at each financial institution, as well as a layer of a, of a mortgage broker as well. So, I mean, if, if anybody's listening and you know, you're know you looking for those recommendations, we are happy to provide those to you. Uh, these are people that we've worked with who are local um, and that we trust. So, um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to having the pre-approval in place, that is of utmost importance. Um, we can also, like I said, help you through that process um, and you know, point you in the right direction if you haven't had a chance to start that yet. Um, but the nice thing too is that you know, we are familiar because of our relationships with these people about what you're going to need. So um, when it comes to, you know, and I'll just talk about somebody who's employed by an employer. So um, those people are going to need their notice of assessments. They're going to need proof of income. So likely a letter of employment um, and also the, um, uh, yeah, letter of employment and then also your last few months of pay stubs. So that right there is going to, you know, that's, that's a good starting point. Yeah. Um, and then they have to do, um, you know, an overall net worth statement. So they do all of that. They gotcha. calculate your, you know, your GDS and your TDS and whatnot. Um, and I won't get any more into that because I'm definitely not an expert. <laughs> but I did work in finance for nine years. So, I mean, there's, yeah, definitely a little knowledge there. But, gotcha. yeah. And then. Yeah, I think the pre-approval. And, and what a lot of people don't know is that when you go in for a pre-approval, you get approved based on the rate that day, okay. but that holds your rate for up to 150 days, depending on your financial institution. So in the event the rate goes down within those 150 days before you actually purchase, you'll write your mortgage at the lower rate. Right. If the rates go up, you have a rate hold at the lower rate, mm -hmm. and you're gonna benefit from that. So. A lot of people are surprised when they hear that. They think, well, if I go in for a pre-approval, if the rates go up, I'm gonna to have to pay that higher rate. Right. You are not gonna to have to pay that higher rate provided you purchase right. within the timeline that, gotcha. that pre-approval is in place. So a little benefit for people that maybe aren't familiar with it, mm -hmm. which is why we do encourage you, if you are starting to think about buying or selling, go in sooner or later, because right. most institu institutions will hold it up to four or five months mm -hmm. so that just gives you some time mm -hmm. yeah and the only other thing I would add to that in terms of paperwork 
um, would be if you do currently own your home, it's really important to find out if you're gonna have to pay penalties. Okay. So um, if you've recently re renewed your mortgage, it's really important for you to find out from your bank or wherever your financing comes from, if there's gonna be a penalty to pay out your mortgage prior to um, the renewal. Okay. Because a lot of times we'll sit down with people who are wanting to sell and we do have a formula that we can use to help people kind of calculate whether it makes sure. sense for them. Um, but a big piece of that is, you know, obviously what you believe your house, your house could sell for, right. but then also what your mortgage payout is going to be because mm -hmm. it's a huge determining factor in whether or not it's wise to, to sell mm -hmm. in order to purchase something different. Yeah. And some institutions will offer a blend and extend okay. mortgage. So if you keep your mortgage at the same institution. Right and just port it into a new property sure. prior to the end of the mortgage term, you can do a blend next step. Okay. So they'll calculate what your mortgage is written at currently right. versus current market rates and blend okay. and then extend the term. So okay. it is a very important conversation to have yeah. and uh, one that some sellers overlook. Yeah. Yeah. And then we sit down with them and mortgage payout penalty, they don't even think about it. Right. So we highly encourage people to have that, to have that conversation and then also ask about what would it look like to do a blend and extend? Or does your institution even offer that? Okay. Uh, and depending on where your mortgage is held, that's gonna depend what answer you're gonna get. Right. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, that makes sense. So I guess that kind of covers the buying side of things. Mm -hmm. What about the selling? If I wanna put my house on the market, is there anything specific you need out of me mm -hmm. to kind of get that process mm -hmm. started? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, um, it's always a good idea, depending on what type of property you have. So if you have a detached home or a bare land condo, we do require an RPR. So that's a real property report. Sure. Um, and some people don't have them because if you've previously bought a home and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't provided, uh, you may have to go out and get a new one. So that can actually take six to eight weeks and it can be 800 to $1,000 to get an RPR. <laughs> So if you have a home and you know you, you received your lawyer you know, documents when you bought the house, right. it should be in there. If you have one, it should be with your lawyer documents. Right. Um, an RPR is really important because um, it shows the structures on the property. So for example, if there's a garage or if there's a deck or if there's a shed or any type of structure that is on in, within the property lines, it also shows things like encroachments, um, if there's any type of, you know, issue with, you know, let's say a neighbor's, you know, uh, the uh, deck, you know, sometimes their deck can be, you know, encroaching onto the property or whatever. There's all different kinds of things. So an RPR is very important. Okay. Um, the other thing, obviously, um, we pull the title of the property. So we would obviously pull the property title if you were selling. We have, it's, it's needed. Um, so then we just check and see, we make sure that there's no, you know, we check the tenancy. So if it's joint tenancy, let's say with you and your wife, which it probably is, you know, we just like to check that. Um, documentation? I think on our side, it's a requirement of us to give you a home evaluation. Okay. To do yeah. our due diligence, to look at comps. Okay. So what has sold, what's mm -hmm. currently active, and provide those to a potential seller for consideration on what are we gonna go into the market with in terms right. of our price point. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that work and pull from the insights that we have access to okay. and then present it to the potential sellers. And typically, you know, they sit with it, they keep it for a couple of days, maybe a week, right. and then they would respond back to us with what their decision is in terms of price as well as when do we wanna go to market. And, or we're gonna wait and maybe give it a couple of months and see what happens down the road. So that's something we do free of charge. Okay. Uh, uh, a home evaluation is something we, we don't ask for anything from right. the potential sellers. Mm -hmm. We like to provide that and then have a conversation mm -hmm. and answer some questions. Perfect. So I would imagine that that probably helps the potential seller to kind of do a bit of this legwork beforehand to set that price point at probably what is gonna be deemed as a reasonable amount mm -hmm. in the market. So you're not coming in you know, too high and letting it sit there for an extended mm -hmm. period of time, or coming in way too low and obviously missing out on some mm -hmm. cash. Totally. Yeah. 
Perfect. Yeah. yeah, and we pull all of the all of the statistics based on you know the location of the home. We'll pull it in the specific subdivision if it's within Red Deer. So I mean, for example, Rosedale Estates. You know, we'll pull all of the data from what our back end of the MLS is. It's called Pillar Nine, and so we pull all of that data and we show it to you in you know in a chart form so that you can see like you know these are the people these are the you know the comparables and these this is where they sold and it justifies the price gotcha. so it really gives people a good idea of like okay if i were to sell today this is what i could get and we usually do a range and at the end of the day it's up to the seller where they decide they want to they want to come into the market yeah perfect so i guess in closing do you guys have any other tips for small business owners or busy professionals that they should kind of keep top of mind when they decide to either get into the buying or the selling aspects of things yeah i mean definitely there's huge benefits to hiring a realtor <laughs> um you know at the end of the day even i mean garrett himself like you've bought and sold properties without a realtor and privately and with an agent. you know it, it can things. be done you know but also learn some things in that process mm -hmm. too. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, the other thing is, is that, you know, to make sure that you have your financials in order. Okay. So if you are a small business owner, you know, you wanna make sure that you've got your last two years of, of financials in order at minimum, okay. because otherwise you likely won't get financing. Okay. So, I mean, if, if you're self-employed and you can't show two years of self-employed income, Usually, now like I said, there's always usually a, a workaround, right. but um, you know it's best if you can do that and and have that in order, okay. um, and just you know yeah keep it you know keep it in order, keep it tidy, make sure that all it's all in order. A little plug for you there, Jared. Yeah. Um, but no, at the end of the day, um, yeah, it's it's super important because we want to see people, especially small business owners and entrepreneurs and people that work for themselves, have success in buying sure. and selling homes. Um, that's a huge part of that too. And then also, yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, wanting to purchase commercial space, we do have referrals to, um, you know, commercial realtors as well. So yeah, um, anything else to add? I think something that, you know, a lot of people don't know or maybe are surprised by is that if you're looking to just buy properties, if you're in investment properties mm -hmm. or rentals, you don't pay commissions. So you can hire an agent the agent works for you, right. the seller pays the commissions. Oh, okay. So if you are just an investor right. who's wanting to purchase properties, reach out to us. Yeah. And yeah. it won't cost you a thing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we'll just save you time yeah. and <laughs> give you more time to, to yeah. do what you need to do. Right. Um, but yeah, commissions for agents are paid by the sellers, okay. uh, not the buyers. So mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things that some people are surprised by, so that's yeah. important to mention. Yeah, no, that's a good tip on the investment side. If you're in that market and, mm -hmm. and you want to kind of keep growing that portfolio, it probably makes sense yep. to have that agent on your team totally. kind of actively looking out for good deals that mm -hmm. come up in the market so you're not losing websites for <laughs> hours and hours and hours. <laughs> yeah, so, no kidding. Losing time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, For sure. Well, right on. I just want to say thanks again, Chelsea and Garrett, for hopping on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedules to chat with me and with the, the audience. I know you guys provided a, a lot of value for you know business owners, professionals, and anybody looking to buy or sell a house. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, what's kind of the best way to, to go about doing that? Yeah, so we are Team Zimmerman Real Estate. So you can find us at uh, teamzimmerman.c21.ca. That's okay. our team website through Century 21. Um, myself and Garrett are also both on Instagram, so I'm sold by, but it's kind of funny. Sold is sold, but then by is B U Y, so it's S O L D B U Y dot Chelsea Zimmerman, <laughs> and then also Garrett, and then we have a team page on Facebook as well, um, Team Zimmerman Real Estate. So you can look us up there, and I think that covers it. That does. Yeah. I will put all the links to that in the show notes so you can quickly go and find them and, and connect with these guys and, and start the buying or selling journey. So for the talk, Tax Talk Podcast, I'm Jared Pallon. I want to just say thanks again for watching. Take care, and we will talk soon. Thanks, thanks so much, Jared. Yeah. You got her. So good. Yeah.